Hi, I'm Claire and today as part of Create to Relate with Ditchley Museum of Art and Craft I'm going to be trying some printing using leaves and flowers that I've found in the garden. So if you'd like to try this at home you just need some paper to print on, some scrap paper, clean scrap paper that you can press on your leaves and flowers when you're printing, you need some paint and paint brushes, you can try any type of paint with this, have an experiment. I'm going to use watercolours and I've got some acrylic. If you've got printing ink at home, that's perfect, try that. And the fun bit is to collect some leaves and flowers that you can try printing with. I've had a wander around the garden, keep your eyes peeled when you go out for a walk, and to collect a range of different leaves and flowers that you think might be quite good when it comes to printing. So I've got lots of different bits and bobs here. I've tried to get some different shapes and sizes. I've got leaves, I've got little flowers. I've had a look at the patterns on the backs of the leaves. And if you close your eyes and you can feel quite 3D ridges on the back of there, that's quite likely to work and do quite a good job. You just need to make sure you don't pick anything poisonous. So it might be a good idea to stick to the plants that you recognise. And you don't need to take many. You only need one or two leaves from each plant so that the plant can keep growing. If you don't have a garden, or you can't find anything that takes your fancy, you could even have a rummage through the vegetable drawer and see if there's anything in there that might be good. You could use the green bit off the top of your carrots, or some lettuce or cabbage leaves. Just see what you can find, have an experiment and see what happens. I love printing, and I think the best thing you can do if you're going to try this is just to have fun, play around with it, and see what happens, because it can be really unpredictable. So you just got to try different paints, different leaves. I'm going to start with some blue watercolour. I've got two bits of scrap paper here. One of them I'm going to use to put my leaf on when I paint it so that I don't get my sheet of paper all messy. And then the other one is to press down on top. I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to get some paint on my brush. paint it all over the back of the leaf and then while the paint's still wet very carefully so I don't get mucky fingers everywhere I'm going to place it on my sheet of paper and then put a piece of scrap paper on top gently and then I'm going to rub it quite firmly but carefully because you don't want to smudge anything and then it's time for the big reveal Here we go. Ooh. So it's always a surprise what you're going to get. That one's really delicate. Let me show you. It's just caught on the ridges of the leaf and you can see all the lines and patterns. So again, paint over the whole of the back of the leaf. Place it on my paper. Always make sure the piece that you're putting on top is clean. Place that on there and give it a rub. Ta-da! I'm going to reuse that one. I'm going to try and make a pattern on my paper. If you get one that doesn't work, don't worry about it. Just put it to the side, try the next one. Once you've used the same leaf a few times, it might start to get a bit squashed, so you might need to try some new ones. The blue paints worked really nicely. I'm going to try some different colours now, starting with a bit of green on this really skinny leaf. See how that works. The leaves seem to be working really nicely, so next I'm going to have a go with some of these flowers, a little bit of cow parsley, and I've got a daisy. I'm also going to try some different paints, I'm going to have a go with this green acrylic, see if it gives a different effect. Now this is a bit more fiddly because it's a skinny stem. It can be a bit more tricky with the flowers. And they might not turn out how you expected. 
because they get a bit squished when you press them down. Okay, this bit's fiddly. Whoop. Paper on top. Gently make sure you press on all of the stem. You don't miss any bits. Oh! Cover the whole thing. All these little bits of flowers. All the way along the stem. I recommend pausing every once in a while and giving your hands a good wash because I find it impossible not to get it all over my fingers and then I'm going to start to smudge my work as well. I also think I need some fresh scrap paper so that that doesn't go on my work. This is a little shoot off the wisteria and it's getting a bit floppy now but it's made some really nice marks. I like that one. Once you start to get the hang of it and you know which leaves you like, which ones are working well, you can think about what you're going to use your print for. You could use it as a piece of art to stick on your wall or some other nice things you might like to try is using your print as wrapping paper to wrap people's presents. You could chop it up and fold it into cards, birthday cards or thank you cards, postcards to send to people. Oh, that's a nice one. I've nearly filled the whole page now, so I'm gonna stop and leave it to dry. Another thing I've tried is I've chopped up some smaller bits of paper and I've done some individual prints to use as nice little bookmarks. Some leaves on that one. And this one's quite nice and simple, just one leaf. But the pattern's nice and it's got a lot of detail in it. I've had a lovely time printing today. It's very relaxing. And it's quite exciting to see how it will turn out. Some of them work better than others. I hope you have a lovely time printing with your leaves and flowers. You can use the hashtag create to relate and if you'd like to donate to the museum you can do that on their website. Thank you, bye!